Okay. Hi. <laughs> this week's fragrance, we will be reviewing or talking about Poirier de Soir. I see them do this in a lot of videos of like beauty reviews, which I feel like I should do. So you can see. <laughs> um, Poirier de Soir is one of my favourite Mila Harris fragrances and it's really popular with all of our store teams. I know it tends to be the first one that people fall in love with when they come in the store um, and, dis and start like discovering Mila Harris. Um, so the name Poirier de Soir means pear tree in an evening and that should give you an idea of what the idea of the fragrance itself is. I've sprayed some already on my wrist slightly earlier on and you get, what I love about this fragrance, what you get from it is this kind of sweetness that doesn't feel cloying. Because I know quite often people like sweet, but they don't want to feel like they're being, wearing a cupcake or wearing something too intense. Um, and so there's this interesting fruitiness that happens in the top of the fragrance um, when you first spray it on. And then that develops a little bit and gets a bit more rich and enveloping and warm throughout the fragrance. So when you first spray it, I'll spray some on a card again so we get the top note. Mm, okay, so when you first spray this fragrance, oh, it just feels good. Um, you get this really wonderful sort of like fizzy burst of citrus right at the top, which is some bergamot and also some tagettes. So tagettes is, um, it's like marigolds. Uh, and the oil has a kind of like floral, but slightly orangey sort of fragrance to it. And here it's kind of adding just a little bit of like fizzy florency in the top. And then obviously, um, to capture this idea of a pear tree, we wanted to have the pears. So you want to have that pear sweetness going on. Um, so that's right there. And it's not one of those uh, pears that feels a bit like pear drops, if you know what I mean. There's kind of like uh, boiled sweets. It's instead kind of like a bruised pear that's on the tree. Um, so, or maybe some that fall into the ground in like a pear orchard or something. And so you've got this kind of sweetness about it and also this kind of bruised warmth uh, that the fruit has. So I find that really rich and kind of inviting. And it's the kind of thing you want to just keep going back to and smelling, which you do, which I keep doing a lot. <laughs> okay, so then, um, the, like the, well, let me talk about the idea behind the fragrance first. So the whole thing was to capture the smell of a pear tree in an evening in the autumn, uh, which is obviously when they're fruiting. So you would capture this kind of um, sweetness of the pears, the warmth of the sun still setting. So it's kind of like Indian summer, that early autumn, late summer feeling where you've got kind of balmy evenings. Um, and then there might also be, I find at least, that there's a kind of smokiness that's happening in the background of the fragrance. So it might be like there's a bonfire happening somewhere in a field further away or like someone's garden a bit away. And you're in underneath the pear tree kind of enraptured with all of the pears and just feeling absolutely like, mm -mm -mm, this is delicious smelling and I need to eat these pears. <laughs> so we wanted to capture the pears and that feeling um, some greenery with like the leaves and then uh, like the sensation of being in a garden as well. So actually in the top of the fragrance, we have bergamot, we have tagettes, which I've already spoken about. That's the oil that's from the marigolds, um, slightly orangey and floral. Uh, and then we have pear, obviously. There's also a sort of like caramel effect, but it's not overwhelming. It's very, very delicate um, and uh, sort of like runs underneath it. And it gives it kind of, I wouldn't say like a candy apple vibe, but I kind of can imagine that there's some candy happening around the pear. Um, and then in the heart, there's all of this floral scene. So you have peonies and you have Turkish rose and it's really sort of voluptuous and warm version of the floral sea rather than being super super fresh um and alongside that we actually have some rum extract in the fragrance so rum you can extract through uh, co2 extraction and um it just smells a bit like the actual oil smells kind of insane because it feels like you're gonna do a shot of rum but when you're smelling um when you're smelling it in a fragrance, it adds this kind of rich depth um, and warmth and sensuality uh, instead of smelling too kind of like booze. So if you wear Poirier de Soir, don't worry, there's no kind of like I smell a booze feeling going on. But the rum effect is very useful and the perfumers worked it very interestingly and well into the fragrance. 
Um, and then in the base, in the dry down, you get some birch, you get some cedar. So the cedar is kind of like the tree itself. And then the birch really captures that feeling of like smokiness. So like I mentioned, there's like a feeling of a bonfire happening, maybe somewhere in the distance. And I mean, this was one of the first, when I first uh, went into Miller Harris four and a bit years ago um, to kind of talk to them about maybe doing some training for them, I was sniffing through things. And this was the one that I kept picking up myself. So I just kept like picking up the bottle and sniffing away like an addict, desperately needing a little bit more of my Parier de Soir. Um, and then I also discovered uh, Tetonique that day, which I still wear day in, day out. It's like one of my everyday fragrances and I think it's wonderful. But Poirier de Soir is a bit more of a event fragrance for me. I know a lot of people, a lot of our customers do tend to wear it day in, day out. But for me, it's kind of the kind of thing that you would wear of an evening. I guess it's because of the name and maybe the sensation of kind of warmth, fruitiness, things like that. It makes you feel like it's an evening perfume. It makes a bit of a statement. Um, but what I would like to talk about next is kind of how you can wear and layer a Poirier de Soir. So this is, um, like I said, kind of a sweeter fragrance. So you might want to put it with something a little bit warmer, a little bit more woody in order to kind of draw out the richness and the warmth of the fragrance. So I would suggest that you could put it with something like Vetiver en Solente or Le Cedre, and that would really sort of like dry the fragrance out a little bit and make it a bit more maybe on the sort of like masculine warm side um, and I do happen to know that it works incredibly well with rose silence they share a kind of uh, black currant tea effect in there and obviously the rose so it starts to tie together very nicely and you get this really beautiful um rose with a kind of like pear mandarin sweetness going on when you combine the two of them and a bit more woodiness that you wouldn't necessarily find in rose silence on its own um yeah, oh god, it's good. <laughs> it's so good. And yeah, I've been wearing it now for a couple of hours. And what happens is it dries, you get this kind of sweet, um, sweet woods sensation, I would say. So as if someone has kind of cut open a, um, cut open, cut some wood, like you've grated some wood and then you've drizzled a little bit of caramel on it. And it has that kind of, that kind of um, texture and warmth going on so we'll see you very soon uh, and remember to stay home and look after yourself and be careful and kind bye